good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Jenna. And I'm Bob. And we are in episode two of the sixth season of the morning show, which is pretty exciting. It is exciting. So if you join Josh and I um, on the last morning show, he talked about um, this particular uh, series of doing live broadcasts it has been renewed. So we were really excited about that. And we just kind of um, want to point out uh, what this sixth season is going to be all about. And we're going to continue to educate and help your business win. And that's exactly why um, we're going to be talking about screen printing versus heat transfer vinyl today on the morning show because those are two of the most popular decoration methods when it comes to printing apparel. It is. And now we do hope to outlast the show Friends. <laughs> uh, which went 10 seasons, so we expect to, to beat that as well. But yeah, screen printing versus heat transfer vinyl, uh, you, you kind of need them both, uh, mm -hmm. in, in, depending on how you're decorating. So we're going to just talk about those, when's the best time to use which, and uh, what all goes into it. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of uh, fun, very informative for you guys. Uh, but before we dive into that topic today, we do want to uh, check out this week's Look of the Week. So this was submitted by Tim Parr on our uh, Stalls All Things Heat Printing Facebook page. Uh, we do a show and tell every Saturday, and uh, this one really caught my eye because of the premium look that it mm -hmm. gives. There's full color uh, mixed with single color in there, um, and it just, it really popped off the garment when I saw it. Yeah, a real professional look, even using the Nike apparel as well, takes mm -hmm. it to the next level, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> Yeah, and um, he mentioned that he was using one of our newer heat transfers uh, that we launched, Stretch Litho Mat. Uh, so uh, if you haven't worked with that product yet, we are offering samples of this through our uh, Transfer Express, the screen printing division um, of the Stalls company. And um, I think that he really took that product and just kind of created an overall very professional look. So congrats to Tim um, for making it well on this week's Look of the Week. Looks really great. Um, uh, some other announcements that we have are upcoming shows and Workshop Wednesdays. So let's take a look at the shows that are coming up um, all through the month of February. We have ASI Fort Worth. Um, you just did... PPA, PPA, PPA yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. The similar pr promotional mm -hmm. products or organization. Uh, so yeah, several of the ASI shows throughout the year, usually at the front end. Uh, always a good, always a good time. I do believe you have to be an ASI member or at least a guest of an of an ASI member for that. Gotcha. And then we have APA Las Vegas. So if you are um, in more towards the laser engraving side of the uh, industry. This is going to be a really great show there. We'll have a booth set up showing how you can actually actually laser engrave on our heat transfer vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have Dax Kansas City. So I'll actually be attending that one, doing some of the education. And Dax is a really great show. It's kind of more on the smaller side of mm -hmm. the trade show scale, but um, it's definitely a great show. A lot of great um, vendors there and yeah. definitely education. Yeah, good education, a good time to get that more one-on-one -on -one type of uh, attention. Uh, sometimes you get lost in the shuffle in some of the real big yeah. shows. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I guess we can go ahead and dive into our topic. Let's dive. All right, so um, we mentioned heat transfer vinyl and screen printing both being one of the most popular decoration methods. And I think they definitely serve two different purposes when it comes to choosing which one to use. Yeah, one will complement the other for sure. I mean, they have their role. There are specific, um, I would say, categories of decorating. Mm -hmm. you, you need them both. You can't just say, I'm just going to screen print if you want to cover you know, everyone's needs. Yeah, absolutely. So screen printing, um, if you're not familiar with this process, it is, um, you know, uh, there are several steps to it. A but lot ultimately, of steps. what you get is screen print ink directly onto a garment. And that is one of the most sought after looks and finishes in the apparel decoration method because that is what is also being used in retail. Yeah, and it's been around forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it dates way, way, way back, hundreds of years overall as far as the process goes. So it's kind of the norm. It's what people are used to. So we kind of gauge everything against screen print. Mm -hmm. My heat transfer vinyl, oh, does it look and feel like screen print? DTG, does it feel like screen print? So it's always screen print is what we're gauging everything against. So it's kind of the, you know, the go-to method. Yeah, so let's go ahead and actually show you guys what this process looks like in this video here. All right, so we see them actually uh, prepping the screen right now, right? So the yeah. design was already created, 
and um, the screen is being prepared in order for that ink to go through that screen. Yeah, prior to that, there was a lot of steps that happened. There was a lot of separation of colors, looking at when we created the design, uh, registration marks put in. Um, yeah, we kind of got past the, the nitty gritty and getting right to putting it on the, sh on the shirt here. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look at this. We'll talk about the, you know, the, the steps that happened prior to that in advance. But you can see we're working with, a, uh, working with a, uh, an automated carousel. So this is like a little bit more of a high end to get some high production. And you see the ink being squeegeed across. You know, so there's fine, a fine mesh screen there uh, with the design, only the design that has open area for the ink to come through. All right, and after that, obviously, we've done a two color there. So we're taking not only the red ink and the same process we're doing with the black ink as well. And then you can see there, um, screen printing also has to go through a certain amount of heat for a period of time in order for it to be cured on the shirt. Right. Um, so that is a dryer, right? Correct. That the shirts go yeah, through. Yeah, typically dryer. Um, it's, it's the last thing that we saw on the, on the video there. Uh, usually a conveyor type of dryer, and it goes mm -hmm. goes through nice and slow. Usually a gas, so it gets rid of the extra moisture. Yeah, but on the front end, I mean, we think we count at one point there's like 17 different steps just to screen print a shirt. Yeah, and it comes has to do with creating the positive, which is just basically the design, at least the per color, mm -hmm. and then applying that um, onto a screen that has already has emulsion put onto the stuff that hardens, and only the when you put a bright light to it, only the Part that doesn't have the screen on it gets hard, and then the, you, you blow out the rest of the stuff. That's why you saw maybe like a uh, like a power washer blowing mm -hmm. out the extra emulsion in that area, and then the screen is prepped and ready to put on the shirt. So there's a whole lot of step going, which is why um, we talk about screen charges. Why it costs, you know, the, one of the things with screen printing is with, with characteristics. I don't want to say plus or minus. Is that you know the more colors you have, the more charge there's going to be, and you have to amortize mm -hmm. that over the number of shirts. So more colors and uh, fewer quantity means more cost, but then the opposite means tr is true. So right. it's, a, it's a good thing. So you, 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 you it's, a, it's the design or the, the method for high volume, lower number of colors. Yeah, and that's what we all have always talked about whenever we talk about all the different um, print opportunities there are, or print medias mm -hmm. um, in the industry is what you use for high volume and low color. Um, but before we dive into that, because that is a, a long, um, discussion. Um, I remember actually going to the Decoration Fulfillment Center here in Masontown and for the first time seeing the screen print process and just kind of being mind blown at the huge equipment that yeah. is there in order to do that. Now, did you ever work, because I know you worked there for a period of time, did you ever get a chance to do the screen printing process at no, all? No, actually when I was there, it was back before there was electricity, um, I was, <laughs> we didn't, we hadn't brought in screen printing just yet. Uh, we okay. had we had access to it, but we didn't bring it in in shop. Uh, but but to your point, to be really successful and do a lot, mm -hmm. especially with the automatic uh, carousel that you see there, as well as the drying and things like, it does take up a whole lot of space. Yeah, and so uh, that kind of brings us to how you can do screen printing without actually investing and bringing in that large piece of equipment. So My favorite. <laughs> we've always um, promoted and talk up, talked about screen printed transfers because it allows you so easily to integrate to that media or offering to your customer without having that large investment and, and then also finding the room for sure. that piece of equipment. So um, screen print transfers are pretty game changing in the industry because they allow you to get that exact screen print ink onto your t-shirt, but all you need is a heat press. Exactly. Yeah, not much investment at all. You don't, is a very low skill set. We didn't even talk about all you know, Indian screen printing and having to yeah. <laughs> be very, you know, it's, it's an acquired skill. You just don't pick it up and say, let's go screen print something. Yeah. So. Um, Let's actually show you what a screen print transfer uh, application looks like. So very small go. footprint. We have uh, the heat press over here we're going to be utilizing is the Fusion IQ. Um, and I'll let Bob take it away from here. Yep. Using the Fusion IQ, um, like, like uh, Jenna said, I almost forgot her name. Um, <laughs> screen print can be messy. Plastisol ink stays wet until you actually cure it and dry it. So it's all over everything. And there's a lot of chemicals, a lot of things that go on. But when it comes to heat screen printed transfers, uh, it's already done. You can't tell much on this one because it's white on a, on a piece of paper, but you'll see it here in just a little bit. We've already trimmed this one so that I could actually find where it goes on the shirt so we wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go over top of any of this area that is a tank. So we're going to 100% cotton district black tank. 
I'm gonna go ahead and load it on. As per usual, we like to work with one layer of fabric. That way there's no uh, restrictions or anything that, uh, any, any of these seams or the thing on something on the back that could transfer. And first thing we do is to preheat. That's for those of you who've been around for a long time, know that it's to relieve moisture and wrinkles, but also to make sure we have the right pressure on the press. We want to make sure that we have the, uh, exactly what we're looking for. Like I said, we've already trimmed the design uh, to make sure that I can find, you know, we put the images close to these, uh, these seams as possible without any problem, making sure that I wasn't gonna overlap. So I'm gonna do that there. And I like screen printed transfers because you've got these grids that help keep it straight. And I'm gonna pull that forward so that seam is not on. Four seconds, 365 degrees, peel hot and done. Instant screen print. This one happens to have a distressed look on it, which is uh, another option that you can do. Flip it this way. And there you go. In four seconds, we have a completed screen printed shirt. So not a whole, no investment other than a heat press and create your design right online. No fuss, no muss. Yeah, and Julian commented he's been wanting to try screen printed transfers. Um, so definitely highly recommended if you are going to get into it. Um, Transfer Express offers the transfer that you just applied and it's called Goof Proof. And you can see it only applies for four seconds. So it's really easy to use. It's mm -hmm. a hot peel. You can get a lot done in a certain amount of time. Actually, you had mentioned uh, whenever we were talking about the topic briefly, uh, you can get a certain amount of shirts done in an hour if you're using Goof Proof, right? Yeah, if you look at it, a four second application, when I ran production and I had a I would expect two transfers per minute out of a, out of someone, especially with a four-second dwell. That allows to the loading and bagging, sometimes bagging and tagging, all those different things. Uh, so I just use the number, I call it like 100 miles an hour, which is 100 shirts an hour. So if you did two a minute, you'd be have 120. So I gave you a chance to take a breath once in a while and get 100 <laughs> shirts done. That's easily That's pretty awesome. Easily achieved. Yeah, yeah, knowing that you can get that amount done in that short period of time um, and we saw from the video of the screen printing process how long it actually takes. Um, we kind of snipped like how much each mm -hmm. step took for each thing. So you're definitely saving not only um, a lot of labor, but a lot of time spent in production altogether. All right, so screen printing. Um, now we talk about uh, pros and cons of each method that we're discussing today. So with screen printing, um, we mentioned high volume is key. Yeah, it is, because for the reasons that we talked about, all mm -hmm. the cost is all in the upfront setup. The ink costs nothing. You could almost give the ink part away. It's all of the process, it's all the labor, it's the, you know, it's this, uh, the art setup, uh, the burning the screens, the emulsion, the washout, the, there's so much goes into the front end of that. Now, once we're all set up, yeah, we can fly through that, with, mm -hmm. especially with an automatic press, as you see there with multiple colors, not a problem. But it's the fact that we have so much invested on the front end that we have to charge for that. And then, again, amortize that or divide the number of shirts that you're going to be selling into that cost. And it puts an automatic um, you know, number there to start with. So higher, color, so higher numbers and less colors is going to be your optimum. Mm -hmm. It's not to say you can't do a four or five color um, design. It would be cheaper if you um, had higher volume of those, but it's still doable. And I want to say it's not possible. We're just trying to find that sweet spot where it makes the most sense and most cost effective for you. Yeah, for sure. And then um, some other things that are great about screen printing is so you mentioned um, the distressing. So mm -hmm. you can uh, achieve some really cool effects in screen printing, um, but mainly you're able to achieve a lot of detail mm -hmm. in that as well. And I mean, you can get into, and it depends on the transfers that you're working with um, as far as the screen print transfers go, but just screen printing in general can only, can achieve high detail to um, freestanding text and very uh, small sure. parts of a design it can actually pick up very well. Yeah, and that'll really show up when we start contracting against HTV. When we see that, we'll talk about the detail there, mm -hmm. about what it takes to get that. All right, so, um, Julian asked uh, ordering process and prices. So um, as far as that goes, you can actually go to transferexpress.com 
um, and get started with them. I would say the easiest way to get started with them is to just purchase a marketing kit. Yep. Uh, ballpark $35 to $45. I can't think of the exact um, number there, but it gets you started with all of their screen print transfers, all of the clip art and templates that they offer, and a t-shirt in there so you can actually make your first press with it and just kind of learn the do's and don'ts of that of those processes. So um, what's nice about that too, and I love this uh, that they offered in that kit is they do all the application instructions mm -hmm. for each um, uh, transfer that they offer. Yeah. So marketing kit will definitely get you started. Uh, once you're started with Transfer Express with that kit, you will actually uh, have an account created and you can dive into the Easy View Designer, start designing in there with templates and clip art or even upload artwork you're already using because um, they actually don't charge an artwork fee anymore, right. which is really nice. Um, and then from there, they'll actually break down the pricing mm -hmm. of what you're ordering. So pricing and ordering process all go hand in hand based off of the transfer type that you're ordering with them. Yeah, we um, only mentioned just, just the goof proof here, and mm -hmm. we maybe alluded to stretch litho early on, but there's a ton of different transfer types out there for high and low temperatures. So you saw this one at 365. I'm doing, you know, I'm doing polyester. I'm worried about scorching. There are different types. So you'll get a chance to see and use all of those within the marketing kit, mm -hmm. as well as the color swatches. Their, their, their color gamut's what's available to you ink -wise. So right. it's definitely worth, uh, worth the money up front. Yeah. All right. So that pretty much covers screen printing. Let's go ahead and dive into heat transfer vinyl. If you guys have any other questions regarding screen printing that maybe we didn't touch on, you guys can go ahead and comment them in, and we will revisit that later. Uh, so heat transfer vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do have a roll here to kind of represent um, what it looks like whenever you order it. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about heat transfer vinyl and uh, kind of what its contents are made mm -hmm. of. Uh, so we have our heat transfer vinyl. It's um, actually three layers. Whenever you first receive it, it looks like two, but we have an adhesive on the back of the mm -hmm. heat transfer vinyl, the actual vinyl, and then the carrier it comes on. All right, so that carrier is there so that you're able to cut designs into the heat transfer vinyl with actually puncturing, without actually puncturing through the roll itself. All right, so uh, the one key thing about heat transfer vinyl is that it comes in single color rolls. All right, so whenever you're considering, um, whenever you would use this, it would definitely be for one to three colors tops if you're getting into multiple orders, not just one-offs. Or um, a lot of people will do a lot of colors that they're just kind of crafting and doing um, fun things at home. But um, yeah, single color, you load it right into your uh, vinyl cutter and you're able to cut your design. So I already have a design loaded into my program here that is connected with the vinyl cutter. All right, so this is what the vinyl cutter looks like. We're working with the Graftech C6000 Plus. And it's a 24 inch cutter, so it's gonna be able to take um, anywhere from a small piece to a large 24 inch roll, um, such as our high vis color reflective that ranges, any, I, I believe, 22 inches actually. Mm -hmm. And sign vinyl um, is actually 24 as well, too. Okay, so yeah, but you don't really exceed uh, that 24 inch, so you shouldn't need anything actually larger than here unless Correct. you're producing larger scale things. Um, so, with this, um, I already have my heat transfer vinyl loaded in through the back, all right? And it's sitting back here on a stand that kind of holds that roll in place for me. Um, so I'm just going to send this design to cut. Before I do that, I'm, ma I'm making sure I set my origin point. And whenever you are cutting heat transfer vinyl, you wanna make sure you're actually mirroring that design. Uh, we are cutting the back side of the heat transfer vinyl technically. So after we weed out this design, we're going to flip it over when we go to actually heat apply it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's favorite is weeding, so <laughs> it's therapeutic, they say. Yeah. Yeah, so we are cutting from the adhesive side. And, and while she did mention three layers, you were only going to see two. The adhesive mm -hmm. is actually bonded to the material itself, so don't be pick, picking around trying to find that third layer she referred to. It's just, it's, it's bonded to the material itself. The core thing, the thing with heat transfer vinyl too, talking about multiple colors, every time you add a color, and we'll get into this even more detail later, you're adding costs. So you're basically duplicating and triplicating your efforts every time you add a color to your design, which is why we say more for single one to two color designs to be most cost effective. You could do a 20 color butterfly if you wanted to, you'd just be on there for a while. 
All right, so as we are finishing this up, I'm just gonna track this material out or retract it out. And um, there is a little spot in here which I can actually just take an X-Acto knife and trim off that heat transfer vinyl. And at this point, all I have to do is weed. All right, and the program I'm using for this is called CADWORKS Live. That's how I was able to create my design and then send it to the vinyl cutter. So a little bit about CADWORKS Live. It is a uh, free online artwork, pro artwork program that we offer. And um, you can design in there and it actually has a um, application that you can download onto your computer that will send all of those designs to a program called Vector Cut, which then sends it to your vinyl cutter. So CADWORKS Live is an online-based um, designer. So you're able to just log in there from any computer and design. She's so good at what she does. <laughs> what type of what material are we using here? We're using fashion film. Okay. All right, so fashion film. Um, it's a it's a good product, especially when it comes to weeding, because it has a tacky carrier. So if I need to do fine detail, um, now I'm not going to be able to achieve as fine detail as maybe the screen print transfer did. Well, um, I, but, I think you can. The trouble is, it just takes forever to weed it right, and to get right. it done. It's very difficult. So it, don't you know? Don't say you can't, but don't do it if you actually want to make some money. If you're cutting, it would just be a lot of time right. spent registered trying trademarks to. and TMs and things like that. Those are just miserable to try to work with. And I wouldn't try to weed out that distressed effect no, that was in that. that screen print transfer. It's just a bad idea. <laughs> all right. So at this point, all I'm doing is trimming out the design. I want to make sure I get all of that excess material out of there because at this point. Our last step, all right, so our first step was obviously cutting the design. Second step is weeding. And now we're going to take it to the heat press and actually heat apply this. All right, so that's why we want to make sure we're getting any excess material um, away so that my design is exposed and ready to be heat applied. The shirt I'm going to be applying is a 50-50 blend. It's from District Made. It's a nice little raglan t-shirt. Um, and this heat transfer vinyl um, typically applies at 320 degrees. Uh, for this demonstration, I am at that goof proof setting, uh, which is 365. So um, this is definitely a higher temperature than fashion films should be applied at. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep that in mind. If I do end up with a nice big old heat printing mark on my t-shirt, that would be why. All right, so uh, just like any other application, such as the screen print application we did. We're going to preheat the garment to get any of those wrinkles out of the way and also release any moisture in there. I'm going to make sure I use my cover sheet. So that is the difference um, in application between screen printing and heat transfer vinyl. With that screen print transfer, you don't need a cover sheet. Uh, that carrier uh, will take care of that. But with heat transfer vinyl, you do need a cover sheet. Now this applies for 10 to 15 seconds, and that was only a four second application, so I'm gonna lock this down for one more time. And so, then we can actually go ahead and um, remove that carrier because it is a hot peel. And we don't condone this type of practice at home, pressing your fashion film at 365, by the way. This is just <laughs> through the magic of television. All right, so a uh, nice matte finish there. Actually didn't get too bad of a heat printing box, though, because we're working with a nice 50-50 blend uh, from District Made. But feels really good on the garment. Heat transfer vinyl is certainly one of those lighter heat transfer vinyls and has that true matte finish. So that's something that we try to um, create within our heat transfer vinyl is something that's going to most likely mimic the look of an ink as opposed to you feel that and you're like, oh, yeah, that's definitely vinyl. It's heavy. It doesn't feel good on the shirt. And there are certainly some vinyls out there, but the thinner the material you get, this is actually 88 microns thick. So uh, the thinner that heat transfer material gets, the nicer it's actually going to feel on the garment. It also helps to find a material that actually has doesn't have much of a gloss to it or sheen, so it doesn't look like plastic or actual vinyl on a shirt. So we're trying to replicate ink for the most part from both uh, visually and, and with the hand or the touch of the, of the garment. I see a lot of comments coming in and they seem very long. Mm. So I'm not going to read them word for word as we're live, but we'll definitely revisit those so that we can uh, get back to some of the comments coming in there. 
All right, so um, pros and cons of heat transfer vinyl. So we did that for screen printing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what that looks like for heat transfer vinyl. Uh, the first thing for me is going to be high quantity because most of the time I'm not going to want to cut and weed a lot of heat transfer vinyl if I'm getting into 25 to 50 to 100 shirts. Right. Well, economy of scale is the key here. Uh, you do get price breaks as you add volume with mm -hmm. screen print. With heat transfer vinyl, other than just getting a little bit better at the weeding and, and that type of thing, it costs the same amount to produce one as it does to produce 100, which is why it is better, more cost effective for, for single colors and, and for shorter runs. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so economy of scale is the big deal. There's no, no, there's no bonus for doing volume with these. Yeah. But there's no penalty for doing small amounts. Right, right. So uh, that's why we always say screen printing and heat transfer vinyl go hand in, hand in hand for an apparel decorator because if you need to do quick personalization and you don't want to have to burn a sc screen for that, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to just load in a roll of heat transfer vinyl, cut out the personalization there, and then add it to another design. So while we try to mostly mimic the look and feel of ink, that makes it perfect for people that are actually pairing those two medias together, right. which we often do. All right. We look at somewhere between 24 and 48 being that cutoff. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as real cutoff because there are other things that come into play, which we'll talk about, about so why you would use heat transfer vinyl. So, but people always say, so when should I start thinking transfers or screen print versus uh, vinyl cutting or, mm -hmm. or HTV? There's a lot of things that have come into play, and some of it's you know, how difficult the design is, and of course, um, you know, just whether or not you have to get it done right now, on demand type of printing. She left. I knew it was going to happen. I'm coming back. I so I also want to show, too, One day would happen. another <laughs> good reason uh, for choosing heat transfer vinyl is also the effects that you can get with it. So here are two prime examples. Um, the first one is a flocked heat transfer vinyl, so it actually has a nice velvety-like feel, and it's textured uh, to kind of mimic the look of embroidery. So a lot of people right. will do more um, higher volume just to be able to achieve the effects that some heat transfer vinyl can provide. So flock is really a really great uh, option, but also glitter. All right, so glitter can be very hard to achieve in um, embroidery. I know there are metallic threads out there, but nothing that can really get you this true glitter texture. And then um, a, the little bit that I do know about people who are trying to achieve glitter in screen printing, one of the challenges they have with that is the glitter falling off of the ink mm -hmm. and transferring onto other um, pieces of apparel and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So um, a lot of people will opt out from doing the glitter um, screen print and just do the glitter heat transfer yeah, vinyl. Bottom line, special effects are reserved largely for heat transfer mm -hmm. vinyl, even with reflective and um, the hologram, there's so many different effects you just cannot get effectively with ink or thread. Right, right. Which is why you would go there. That's why I say, okay, we have 24 of these. Should I buy a screen print? Well, you can't do it with any of those, so you definitely are going to the heat transfer vinyl. Yeah, for sure. And then um, a lot, a lot of people will do too if they want that special effect and they're like, there's no way I'm cutting a hundred, cutting and weeding a hundred pieces of that they will just outsource it at that point. So mm -hmm. that is another service we offer, just like the screen printed transfers uh, that we provide for those of you that want to bring screen printing in-house in and mm -hmm. don't quite have that uh, money ready for that investment or even the space, right. uh, then you know we have those, those transfers. Same thing with the heat transfer vinyl. If the vinyl cutter is an investment you want to make right now, you just want to use your heat press only, or if you want to keep um, labor low, as far as your cost to produce goes, then we have those transfers cut and ready to heat apply for you as well. I like being in business with just the investment of a heat press. That just, that works. Yeah. All right, so, um, hi Veronica. And can we see a side-by-side -side of the screen print and the vinyl? Absolutely. So we have, you wanna grab that one? Suppose. <laughs> You're closer. All right. <laughs> All right, so heat transfer vinyl. They're a little bit different in design because we do have mm -hmm. the tech, or the uh, distress look on this one, and they're different colors and different designs. But bottom line, detail and durability is something we haven't mentioned at all. Both similar. Uh, both mm -hmm. are lab tested for 50 plus washing and drying cycles. So uh, there's no worry about you know, how long they're going to last within the shirt, which we say is the life of the garment in the industry, 50, 50 washes. Yep. What All right. Said. 
So um, aside from uh, the different transfer types in heat transfer vinyl, we also have different transfer types in screen printing, which you mentioned briefly earlier. Um, so I definitely encourage you guys to um, kind of work with different samples, think outside of the box, get involved with something a little bit new. Uh, easiest way with Transfer Express, again, is the marketing kit. And then, of course, we offer samples of all of our different um, finishes and heat transfer vinyl as well. Yep. All right. And that's all we have for this morning. Uh, we will definitely revisit all of those uh, comments or questions that came in. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channel. Have a great one.